Today, we're gonna be testing 47 anti-spatters, and we're gonna find out which one of these is the best. And then, test the myth that you can use products from your kitchen or pantry off the shelf that can beat the commercial units. And if that still doesn't work, we're gonna mix them all together. And will that be the best anti-spatter ever? Well, we're gonna find out in this video. So what is anti-spatter spray? Well, weld spatter is an insurance policy to keep those weld BBs from sticking to your metal. Yes, I know you should never have weld spatter stick, but there are problems with that. You may not have the right torch settings. Your welder might not be adjusted perfectly or your stick out can change depending on the conditions, which could cause that weld BB to stick to your material. And this stuff is supposed to help with that. We're gonna be doing three distinct tests today. The first one we're gonna do for low voltage on the wire feed welder. And the second test, we're gonna be cranking the amps up and seeing how it performs at a higher heat range. And the third test, we'll be painting over the finalists from the first two. So I've purchased some eighth inch, four inch wide cold roll flat bar. I cleaned it all first to get rid of all the oils, and then I sheared it to length in the Prana, creating a four by four coupon. After the coupon comes out of the Piranha, I will spray it and follow the instructions on the can. Then it goes straight into this four jaw chuck, which I have rigged up with the MIG welder. And all I need to do then is hit the foot control pedal and the trigger on the MIG gun at the same time, producing consistent welds every time. So I'm gonna be doing three things wrong in this test. Wrong welder settings, bad torch angle, a lot of stick out, and we're gonna be dragging to produce big BBs. Hopefully we'll be generating a lot of spatter. So do not use these weld settings. I repeat, do not use them. <laughs> and they are 420 inches per minute at 21 amps, running a CO2 argon mix 7525 and a 20 CFM gas flow. So that's gonna be how the test is gonna be performed. And we'll do this 50 times to get through every one of these. So I wanna use this really cool rotary table in part of this experiment. And this is gonna help eliminate the human error out of this whole test. So all I have to do is click this button with my foot and the machine starts turning. I can then control the speed mechanically by a little gearbox. If I wanna rotate the position, I can flick a switch and it goes the other way. And like I said, I can go real slow or I can make this thing go pretty fast. As you can see, this rotary table has seen better days and I'd like to eventually rebuild it someday. So if this video gets 30,000 thumbs up or likes, we'll take it apart, rebuild it, or make a whole new one from scratch. How about that? Hit the thumbs up and we'll build a new rotary table and I'll show you how. Before I started, a control was made in order to have something to compare all the anti-spatter tests to. It's raw 1018 cold rule steel. We have a lot to go through, so I'm going to rapid fire off our contestants. We've got Weld A Clean 350, Simple Green, ArcFix E90, Walter E Weld 3, Techni Weld 777, Urea, Dark Tech Weld SS1000, Weldmark 200, Best Weld, Contesto, Weld Aid Clean HD, Dynaflex 200, Harris 1620, Blackstone, Hobart, Anchor, Weld Aid Nozzle Clean 2, Olsten Gases, Nozzle Clean HD, Protex Plus, Harris 1630, Hot Max, Lesson, Loctite SF, New Bedford, Metaflex, Mountain, CRC, Dynaflex 390, Blue Diamond, Power Weld, Horny, Dynaflex 1620, Pro, Black Magic, Abacor, Benzel, Osborne, Weld Spray, Radnar, Walter E Weld 4, McGuire's Quick Wax, Sprayway Glass Cleaner, Carnuba Car Wax, Crisco, Ham, Butter Flavor, Lingito Loose Chalk, Dawn Dish Soap, WD 40, Flexitol Foot Spray. Whew, wow, that was a lot. Let the test begin. Basically, we have three different types of anti spatter we have the water based, and you have some silicone, and then of course, you have the mystery anti spatters that on the back of the can say they will cause cancer. I purchased most of these cans off the internet and most of them came in between eight to $12, except for the ceramic spray, which was around 30 bucks. So quite a bit of difference. Let's take a look at the test with the short circuit, high wire feed popcorn setting on the commercial spatters here. And what I did notice right off the bat, all of them have beat the control. So that's a good sign and welding in a circle, I'm noticing that all the BBs kind of like to collect in the middle. Weird scenario, I didn't expect that to happen. But the top performers that I noticed are this E-Weld 4, did very well. It didn't leave a residue behind, and the center of the coupon is fairly clean from the start or stops, which is quite interesting. 
The next performer that I saw that did really well was this Osborne powder, which is a light powder. I noticed when I spray over the coupon, it sticks to the metal. So that one did rather well. And another one that I think stands out is this Ragnar anti-spatter spray. There's almost no spatter on the outside or inside, but it did leave a light film behind, which could get in the way when we do our paint test on it. So I'll look forward to testing that in the next test. And this ceramic spray also did a good job. There's one little light BB in the center, but it also left this coating behind. And the Black Magic also performed very well too. The worst ones that I'm seeing is the simple green anti-spatter leaves a lot of spatter in the center and a real nasty residue around the outside of the weld. And this Mountain Anti-Spat also left a lot of spatter. It actually really resembles closely to the control. This Metaflux also leaves a lot of residue behind and it didn't really perform all that well. So that's pretty surprising results. For the second test, we're gonna be turning down the wire speed to 300 inches per minute and cranking up the volts to 29.6. And this is on 035 hardwire. We're gonna be switching the coupon to hot roll plate with some mill scale on it. Let the spatter begin. All right, let's take a look at how all these weld spatters performed. You know, there was quite a bit of difference between the first test on the cold roll with the short circuit, and now with the hot roll plate and being able to glob, I could literally watch in my welding hood these big blobs of molten metal jump out of the weld puddle and then stick to the material. It was quite fascinating to watch this all happen. All of them almost performed better than the control. So using any one of these is gonna be better than using nothing but there are some that stood out more than others. So the ones that jumped out at me as being the best performers are this Welder's Black Magic. If you read the back of the can, it says, a light coats of Welder Black Magic spray area dries in seconds, leaving a high temperature resistant coating, which is similar to that of a non-stick coated cooking pan. So you're basically putting a coating on your material, which I think this would be fantastic for a fixture, something that's just going to be constantly pounded by weld spatter over and over and over again, but it's something that you'd keep. It's not something that you'd send out the door to get sandblasted or give to a customer. It's something that's gonna have repetitive blasting. So this performed really well. The next one that surprised me is this Walter E-Weld 4, and it's this white liquid in the spray bottle. And there is not one BB left behind on this plate. It didn't leave a residue behind. Not one BB stuck to it, which is quite interesting. So that performed phenomenal. The next one that did fairly well is the ceramic spray. Much like the Black Magic welder spray, there's not one BB to be had that stuck to it. But it also left this coating behind, which could be a positive and a negative depending on what you're using it for. I'm not quite sure how well it's gonna perform in the paint test, if we can paint over it, but we'll find out in the next experiment. Another surprising standout that didn't do so well in the first test, but did well in this test, is this whale spray. And this is just a little salesman sample I have here, but it actually did pretty good keeping the, the big weld spatter off of it. You can literally see on the test coupon as the BB skipping across the plate, it's not sticking to it, which is quite interesting. Let's talk about the ones that didn't do so hot, which is surprising to me, is this Ragnar. If you look at the test coupons, you can literally see the trail of the BB rolling through the anti-spatter, leaving a trail behind it and then sticking right onto the plate. It looks like the anti-spatter gets burned off at these higher voltage settings, which makes sense why it actually did pretty good in the low voltage setting. So that's quite interesting. Another not so hot mark was Arc Air also did not perform too well. We've got quite a few weld spatter that stuck with this one. I had high hopes for Simple Green, but it just didn't perform very well in this test. And though this Weld Clean 350, I also didn't see spectacular results from it either. So something to look at when I see these is there's some that are really clean material, like the E-Weld 4 
and the E-Weld 3, where there's no residue behind, you can literally touch each coupon with your finger on the corner and it's virtually dry. And then there's others like the Ragnar or CRC or this Metal Flux that leave this real nasty film behind on the plate, which uh, I don't know. It's gonna, we're gonna see how well they perform in the paint test. And so that's something to consider if there's gonna be a secondary process after you weld, how are you gonna clean it? So now I'm real excited to test these internet suggested anti-spatters that we can use out of the pantry or closet or even right here off of an acetylene bottle and see if they can beat any of these commercial anti-spatters and see how well they perform. So let's do that test right now. So this test was performed on the hot roll plate with the welder set to high voltage with the glob. Up first, the glass cleaner. I don't know why glass cleaner would work, but we're gonna find out. This is gonna be interesting. I mean, that's how much I would spray on if I was gonna use glass cleaner as anti-spatter. Ready? Here we go. Not looking so good. Nope. Stick. We got one, two, three, four, five. Did a little bit better than the control. So, not spectacular. Let's try Carnuba Wax. You know, if this stuff works, this is this would go a long way. That this is like three dollars. Nice liberal coat on there. Let's give Carnuba Wax a try. Three, two, one, go. And some roll off. And stop. That did way better than the control. We got two little BBs on there and it smells amazing. There's no yucky residue. I don't know, there might be something to that. So this is the most requested home remedy anti-spatter, Pam. And this is butter flavor. So I'm gonna guess this should smell like popcorn. Let's test it. In three, two, one. Oh, just saw one stick, two stick, three stick. Okay. Oh, look at this though. I don't like this. See how this yuckies is just, I mean, look at the oil there. I mean, now I gotta clean all that yucky off. And it looks like I got one, two, three big blobs. Eh. The performance is, I'd call it, mm, better than nothing, but not the best. This weld spatter tests Bakhti Y Flexitol foot spray. Not really. I'll paint it on like a car. It smells really good. Okay, it's dry. You can kind of see that white residue powder left on it. Okay, let's see how it does. Fine foot spray powder in three, two, one. Let's take a look. Okay, first thing I noticed about the foot spray is that I got one BB there, one BB there, right in that affected zone, but there's no residue anywhere after I wipe it off. Like, look at that. Literally, I would use this. Better the control, smells good, no residue. The next one on the test is this Meguiar's Ultimate Quick Wax. It's like a detailing. And I think the idea behind this is too, is just to have some sort of barrier so let's just give it a quick mist. There, I got a good coverage. And it looks 
it looks like the other commercial stuff, that wet shine to it. And it smells good also. Quick detailing spray in three, two, one. Oh, it looks good. One BB stock. Two. Two. Okay, what do I got here? So I got one there, one there, one there. Still better than the control, which is funny, but it left kind of a little burnt residue around the edge. Better than the control though. The next myth is that you can use some sort of loose chalk. I don't know why, but that's what the internet said. So we're gonna find out if the internet is right. Now, what I saw last time when if I put this powder on here is that the gas nozzle blew a lot of it away. <laughs> like the gas from the torch. But I'm gonna work it in. We'll try that. I don't know why, but it looks like it'd be easy to clean up. Loose chalk in three, two, one, go. Oh, one stuck already, two stuck. Three, four, five, six. Okay, got quite a few BBs on there. That's not any better than the control. So loose chalk, don't use it. Straight up pure vegetable cooking oil is another myth. We're gonna test it. I think this is kind of do, gonna do the same thing as the Pam. There you go. Vegetable oil for anti-spatter in three, two, one. Oh, that one's stuck. Oh, almost burned through. Okay, so upon first initial inspection, it did better than the control. We got one BB there. I almost blew through. I don't know why it got so hot. But it left the oil behind, which now I got to clean off, which I don't like. So, but in a pinch, and if you're not worried about cleanup afterwards, we got some Dawn dish soap, and I got about 10 ounces of water in here mixed with about a, a teaspoon of Dawn dish soap. So just basically soapy water. In three, two, one. I got one, two, three, four, five, five BBs on there. So not much better than the control now that I look at it. Uh, for some reason, I don't know why the internet says use WD-40. I don't think it's a good idea to use WD-40 as anti-spatter. But got some here in a spray bottle and we'll test it. Whoa, that's a lot. Flammable WD-40 for anti-spatter, which doesn't sound like a good idea. In three, two, one, go. Woo, all the oil is now built up where it's all cool in the center burned away and now there's this just smoke just billowing off this thing <coughs> one two three four so there's four bbs on there you know it didn't do all that better than the control maybe a little bit i'd use soapy water over wd-40 so what i would like to do is try 
setting up the weld coupon. And what I mean by that is we're gonna use the acetylene and just make a black sooty cloud and coat the material with it. You guys have seen this before. It's all those little floating parachuters that are always in the air. And the first time I saw this was on Michael Cthulhu's channel and he makes big giant swords. And ever since I saw this, I've wanted to try it personally. And now here's my chance. Glob transfer, soot, hot roll plate in three, two, one, go. Oh, one stuck. Whew. Smoky. Looks like we got one BB stuck there. Another one stuck there. Two, three. I got four. It's a little bit worse than the commercial anti-spatters. There's four BBs stuck to that. Now that we've tested all 47 anti-spatters, the little kid in me wants to play mad scientist and mix them all up and create the ultimate anti-spatter. All right, we've got our cold roll and our hot roll. Let's do the hot roll first. Oh, I got a big blob of something. <laughs> got a blob of something on there. Who knows, could be anything. There you go. The perfect anti-spatter spray. On your mark, get set and go. Uh, nothing yet. Oh, one, two, three, four, five. Ooh, let's see what we got. I didn't do very good. <laughs> I'm actually extremely surprised that, that it didn't do better than this, but there's quite a few BBs left on the plates and needs to say I'm a little bit disappointed, but I had fun doing it and that's what matters the most is that we have fun in the shop and we enjoy what we do. So mixing 47 anti-spatters, probably not the best thing. Well, that was a bust. At least I have some finalists to do the paint test on. So I've got the high voltage test winners here on the hot roll plate and the low voltage test winners. And we're gonna test how well the paint sticks. And we also have the two controls of both. And we're gonna just be used as Krylon paint and primer in one yellow. And paint them, let them dry, and do the fingernail scratch test and see how well the paint holds up. Let's check out, see how the paint stuck on these test coupons, let's start with the controls first. Ooh. Man, stuck pretty good. This is the cold roll. That's to be expected. This is the hot roll. With a bunch of BBs in there. <coughs> pretty good. <laughs> So we'll compare all the coupons to the controls. This is the Radnar cold roll. Ooh, see that's exactly what, just scrapes it off. <laughs> so the paint does not stick to the Radnar just as much as we thought with that greasy oily film on it. But next up is the Osborne. This is like a powder on the cold roll, whoa. Sheesh, that just flakes off. Not good for paint. Incredible, huh. Just wipes right off. Same with the hot roll plate. That's weird, huh? Okay. Uh, this is the whale spray. This also left us a residue behind. It's a little bit tougher to get off. It's, it's stuck on there pretty good. Well, look at that. See where the, the paint 
uh, burnt away the, the spray. It's, it's Oh, that's a really fascinating result. Where the whale spray is left behind, the residue, it gets scraped off. But where around the weld, or burnt it away, the paint sticks really good. <laughs> so that tells you that the whale spray is interfering with the paint. Extremely strange. Okay, let's try the hot roll. It's, it's stuck on there, but it's, not as nearly as good as the control. The black magic. Well, no. Just scrapes right off. <laughs> okay, black magic, not good for painting. <laughs> But there's not a single BB in sight. It's easy to scrape. All right. Foot spray. You know, paint's not, it's coming off, but it's stuck on there better than what you think it would be. Not what I'd call paintable, but not the worst performer in the group. So, so, uh, E weld four on the cold roll. Oh, yeah, you can tell that it's hard to scrape off. Urgh. I have to push really hard. Uh, uh, I have to push hard to get the paint to come off. Let's try the... Definitely probably one of the hardest ones. So far, yep, and the uh, Benzel, the Benzel ceramic. Oh, sheesh, just shoo, slides right off there. Hey, that's something weld spatter is good for, keeping paint off things. No, this sloughs off just easy. Look at that. That's night and day difference from the e-weld. The scores are in. In third place, it's Whale Spray. In second, it's Black Magic. And I give first place to the Walter e-weld 4. I'll be switching to this anti-spatter and using it most of the time in the shop. I'll also use Black Magic and the Ceramic Spray for projects that require heavy spatter resistance that won't require painting. I had a ton of fun doing this experiment and this test. With 20 years of experience in this metalworking trade, I'm constantly learning new things, and I hope you guys did too. I wanna to remind you guys, if we hit 30,000 likes on this video, we will be building a rotary table. Please give this video a thumbs up if you want me to show you guys how to make it. I'm gonna provide a slideshow of each individual test coupon and their associated weld spatter on the Fireball Tool website, so go check that out if you want more information on how your weld spatter performed. I'll have that link down in the description below. And until next time, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you soon.